As Valorant continues to evolve, one thing has become crystal clear. The importance of team compositions can't be overstated. Each map in Valorant requires a very specific style of play. Choosing the right agents for a map isn't just about preference, it's about strategy. If your team comp doesn't align with the intended playstyle of the map, you're setting yourself up for a tough match from the start. That's why today, we're going to be detailing what it is that makes each map different and why the best teams are playing these specific agents to dominate. We've both considered professional play as well as ranked play in this video to make sure that you're getting agent rosters that make sense for you. And we're also telling you what it is that makes these agents so good on the maps, so you'll know how to play them. So buckle in because this is going to be quite a trip. Starting off with Ascent, in 2024, the meta remains fairly consistent as to what it's always been, with very few changes. Sova continues to be the best initiator. With paper-thin walls and tons of cross-map dart lineups you can do, he really is just the best option. His Owl Drone also provides invaluable map control, making him a staple for any team aiming to dominate on Ascent. KO remains a popular choice. He's great for defaulting and a nightmare to try to defend against on executes. However, in ranked play, most commonly, you'll see KO swapped out for an additional duelist. Just hope it's not Reyna. Omen maintains his spot as the top controller. The extra dive provided by his shrouded step makes him a pretty necessary tool for Ascent, as entering without some form of dive can be near impossible on Ascent. Additionally, Omen's flash proves very powerful through these tight spaces on the map, further cementing his place in the team comp. Killjoy as a Sentinel remains highly effective on Ascent. The map is smaller, so she doesn't run into too many range restrictions, and her stall is incredibly nice to shut down fast pushes in ranked. Not to mention, her ultimate is an excellent retake tool on both A and B site. While Killjoy is the preferred choice, swapping her for Cypher can also be effective. He provides a bit more info at the cost of a little less stall. Finally, Jet is the preferred duelist. She's great with an AWP and just as good at entrying. What more could you want? That being said, although Jet is a solid choice, Raze can easily take her place in many team compositions, bringing additional area denial and damage potential to disrupt enemy setups. Due to how important some of the dive is on your team, we really wouldn't recommend many duelists other than Raze or Jet, but hey, it's up to you. Keep in mind, team comps might give you an edge over your opponent, but if you can't shoot the broad side of a barn, none of this is going to matter. Valorant is an FPS game, and no amount of strategizing is going to get around that. So if you're going to play the game, you might as well play it well. That's why we've gone ahead and created an elite service that teaches you guys everything you need to know about becoming a godlike aimer. Our course is designed to take you from a noob to pro in just one month by teaching you all the tricks the experts use to frag more in their matches. We break down pro gameplay into simple to understand rules that literally anyone could follow to develop good aim. If you don't believe us though, that's fine. Our site is backed by our ranked improvement guarantee, so if you don't climb, you don't pay. We do this because our service works, and if it doesn't work, you shouldn't pay. Check it out using the link in the description below for a discount. And other than that, let's dive into Sunset. Moving on to Sunset, Ray secures a spot as a top duelist on this map for a number of reasons. You'll hear this from more maps, of course, but Raze is just excellent for fighting for space. Her utility is some of the strongest of any duelist in the game, and her satchels allow her to scale up faster than any agent in the game. Alone, Raze is incredibly powerful. However, she is particularly effective on Sunset due to the strength of Cypher, another key agent in the lineup. Cypher's extensive information gathering tools make him a dominant force, especially his tripwires, which are notoriously effective on B-Site. He also has a ton of nasty cameras towards A that can provide an insane amount of info, and his cages are excellent for lurking either towards mid or A. In pretty much every instance on Sunset, you're guaranteed to see a Cypher. For this reason, Raze is even better, since she's fantastic at clearing out tripwires, making these two agents basically the yin and yang of Sunset. Moving on, Fade, while a less conventional pick, brings immense value to Sunset due to her two Prowlers versus Sova's one drone. There's a ton of tight spaces on the map that needs to be cleared out, and sometimes, Sova's drone just doesn't cut it. She also combos super well with Raze, which is a major plus. Fade's Prowlers are also useful for disrupting Cypher's setups, adding another tool to deal with them so you don't always have to waste paint shells. Finally, her ultimate ability is just the icing on the cake. It's great for executes and great for retakes. Gecko has recently become a more prominent figure in the meta as well, particularly excelling towards the A side of the map, where there's not really a ceiling to block Dizzy from acquiring targets. His Molly is great for stuffing the choke points across the map, and due to the map layout, it's very frequent that you're able to pick Thrash up for a second use. Let's not forget about Wingman. Having this buddy for planting proves highly advantageous, especially since the B-Site meta is shaping up to be just planting the spike and spamming from B-Main. Last but not least, Omen remains a critical component of the team, 
mirroring his importance on Ascent with his versatile skill set. His ability to stuff choke points with his blind is crucial for controlling A main, while his smokes are near global so your team on B won't be left hanging. Similar to Ascent, his dive is also just an incredible tool, and there's tons of off angles that Omen can play on the map due to his shrouded step, solidifying his necessity in the team comp on Sunset. Moving on to Split, Ray stands out as a superior choice for a duelist due to her high impact on the close quarters areas of the map. Blast packs are the perfect tool for getting through narrow choke points. I know we've said that a lot so far, but once we get to maps like Breeze and Icebox, things get a bit different, I swear. It's really her paint shells that make her so good on this map. Basically, one use of this ability and you've shut down any progress your opponents were making. The icing on the cake is her boombot, which is perfect for scouting and clearing risky angles such as bee heaven or ropes, just providing an extra piece of droning utility which is always nice. For initiators, Gecko's inclusion in the team brings unique advantages. Basically, his entire kit is amazing on split. Dizzy is great for gathering info and clearing close corners, especially since shotguns are so prevalent on this map. This is an absolute blessing. Thrash being fantastic for a similar reason, of course. Gecko's mosh pit is massive, so it's almost impossible to avoid in certain areas of the map. And finally, Wingman is super nice, since the safest plants on split are often not the most ideal. Wingman allows you to get great plant locations with minimal risk, which is incredible. For Sentinels, Cypher basically sweeps the competition for his info. His spy cam can spot for lurks on both A and B pretty effectively. And there's lots of annoying tripwires you can place to trip up entries as they come in. For controllers, nothing new. Omen's toolkit is tailored for split as well. We'll say it again, the map has tight chokes and that makes his shrouded step really nice to have. His blind is great obviously for executing ramps or be heaven but we do recommend picking him in a double controller setup. Most often in pro play, you'll see a Viper. She's just great at defaulting towards A, making a lot more variables for the enemy team to deal with. Her stall is also fantastic on defense, so she's basically running the show on both sides of the map. You can consider swapping out either Omen or Viper for Clove as well. In a ranked setting, this is probably more likely to work out since games are often played a bit faster. On Bind, the agent dynamics have evolved to make the most of the map's unique features, particularly the teleporters. Clove has taken the spotlight as the top controller, overtaking Brimstone primarily due to her aggressive playstyle. Her metal ability is especially powerful when combined with Raze, as it can reduce enemies to just 1 HP, setting them up for quick eliminations. Not to mention, Smokes After Death is just insane, easily putting Brimstone behind her on the tier list. Raze continues to excel with her paint shells, clearing tight spaces like U-Haul, Hookah, or Garden effortlessly. Are you tired of hearing it yet? Because we're tired of saying it. Gecko brings versatility to the team, with his ability to teleport and use Dizzy immediately to scout and secure areas. This is especially nice when teleporting, as you can combo Wingman and Dizzy through the TPs and basically instantly overwhelm players on the other side instantly. Sky is another great pick for similar reasons, and is often favored over Gecko in pro play, so definitely don't sleep on her. Cypher's value on Bind is immense due to the map's reliance on strategic executes. His cameras provide essential visibility on both A and B sites, while his tripwires secure flanks, allowing teammates more freedom to maneuver through teleporters. Finally, Viper remains a preferred pick for controlling areas like Short. She basically has the best stall in the game, so on a map where executes are king, this is pretty crucial. In ranked matches, Yoru becomes a great honorable mention, since most often it'll be difficult to get your team to run double controller. His flashes are super deadly for fighting for space around the map, and he has a lot of really great plays he can make with the teleporters as well. Not to mention, his ultimate basically just clears out a site for free, which is insane. Together, these agents form a robust team that leverages Bind's teleporters well to dominate the map. On Breeze, the expansive layout demands a varied team composition to effectively cover its wide open spaces. Cypher remains a top pick due to his superior information gathering capabilities. His ability to set tripwires and then rotate freely is unmatched, offering flexibility and security for his team. His cages are particularly useful in controlling critical areas like halls or mid. Yoru's versatility with the operator makes him a formidable presence on Breeze. He can swiftly shift from A main to B site using his teleport, making him unpredictable and hard to counter. His decoys are perfect for dismantling Cypher's setups or initiating onto a site, adding to his utility as a duelist. Jet's prowess with the operator is also a significant advantage on such an open map, where her mobility can be fully leveraged, making her a great option as a duelist. Sova's value is immense on Breeze due to the open sight lines. His drone can scout vast areas like A main, providing vital information and sight visibility for his team. His recon abilities benefit from the open skybox, allowing for broad coverage and effective operator counterplay. For controller, Viper is nearly indispensable on Breeze for her ability to control large areas with her toxic screen. 
Her wall is crucial for smoking off sites without leaving gaps, and her mollies are essential for delaying enemy executes, which on such a large map is so valuable. Her overall utility makes her a staple for managing the giant map. Finally, Kao rounds out the team with his ability to disrupt enemy defenses during rushes. His suppression abilities can silence sight anchors and again, since rotates can come in kind of slow, this often leaves them in a very difficult position. Beyond this, his flashes gain extra utility from the open environment helping his team gain the upper hand during executes. In ranked games, another duelist might be more common, but KO's contributions in organized play are invaluable. On Icebox, controlling the plant and post-plant situations is critical, making agents with abilities like Molotovs highly valuable. These agents can significantly delay the planting of Spike on B-Site, often preventing it entirely. Due to the verticality of A-Site, which allows any agent to utilize high ground, traditional movement abilities from duelists are less critical here compared to other maps. Yoru is a top choice here, due to his proficiency with the Operator and his ability to quickly take duels and escape from aggressive positions on A-Site. On top of this, his flashes provide excellent utility, enhancing his effectiveness as a duelist. While Jet is also a viable option, and a bit of an easier one, we believe Yoru's time in the meta has been approaching for a long while, and urge you to give him a shot. For initiators, Sova remains indispensable for scaling attacks on both A and B sites. His recon tools are unmatched by other initiators. Many teams nowadays are favoring a Gecko-KO combo, but honestly in matchmaking, unless these players are really adept, it can be tough to fight for space without a Sova. For Sentinels, Killjoy is preferred over Cypher on Icebox because of her Molotovs, which are crucial for delaying plants. Her utility also plays a key role in controlling the nightmare of an area that middle is to hold. Finally, for controllers, Viper's inclusion is essential. Her mollies similar to KJ's are invaluable on B-Site and her wall is one of the only effective form of smokes for stalling an A-site play. Don't even get me started on her smoke orb in mid on offense too. It's basically constant lurk pressure. Though some teams opt for Harbor to utilize his cove for additional cover during plants or defuses, Viper's overall control remains superior for matchmaking. For the fifth agent slot, the choice varies based on team needs and strategies. The best three options are Gecko, Sage, and KO. They kind of all do the same thing on offense, which is just help your team get the spike down a bit more, but they all do it in slightly different ways that may favor different playstyles. On defense, Sage can be nice because her wall can cut off different lanes on the map. KO is great for running flash plays and fighting for space, and Gecko is like an in-between of the two, makes planting easier, but also great for fighting. For our last map on Lotus, defending the three bomb sites requires a team composition that can aggressively contest space to limit attackers' options. Raze remains a top pick, as her paint shells effectively prevent early pushes out of choke points like A main. This control helps the team establish dominance over key areas early, setting the pace for the round. For controller, Omen is favored. His blinds are crucial for taking control, and his ability to play smokes globally supports his teammates across the map. You can one-way C or A, and even drop sight smokes if your teammates need. If you favor Clove, they are not particularly bad. They can fight for space really well on A. But if your teammate needs a smoke on C, it can be kind of tough since you're so far away. For Sentinels, Killjoy's utility is invaluable on Lotus due to her ability to stall enemy advances and provide time for team rotations. Her ultimate is also great for every site on the map, basically always providing the chance for a round win when it's available. For Initiators, Gecko is popular for a straightforward utility that can dominate defaults. If you're able to cycle your Flash and Wingman two to three times in a round, you can get insane value from it. Since the map is so big, you won't normally just be booking it into sites anyways, so you can use it to take rubble, pick it up, and then use it again later for whatever you decide to do. Gecko is also great for fighting for space on defense, which is again, phenomenal on this map. Finally for our fifth, Viper is the preferred pick as a second controller because of her strong defaults on offense and insane stall on defense. When Viper isn't an option, pro teams often choose Fade for her space controlling capabilities. Her prowlers excel in pushing through tight spaces like Tree on A or deeper into spawn areas on B and C. Alternatively, teams might opt for a second duelist, which, while not ideal, can still work in ranked. Alright you guys, before we wrap this up, let's tell you a bit more about skill capped. So we offer a 5 division rank up guarantee, and that's a pretty crazy thing to offer. It's like a gym membership guaranteeing you'll get ripped. Your local gym would go bust if they offered you that. Not us though, we've offered this for years because our service really does work. It works so well in fact that we're able to produce by far the largest catalog of premium Valorant guides on the internet. 
We add new courses every month with over 1,000 guides curated into over 50 courses. No one can compare. We also have a direct line of communication with subscribers in our Discord so that you can get connected immediately to some of the best players in the game who will respond to all questions asked. Not only that, but we've also been running community in-houses throughout the week where you can learn with players just like yourself. Sign up today for as little as $6.99 a month if you are serious about improving. So that's going to be all for this one today. Thank you guys so much for watching, and we'll see you all in the next one.